who is the president of Al Nadwa Free Thinking Society and professor of Arabic language in the Department of Near Eastern Studies at Wayne State University. A native of Lebanon, Mr. Shabit has been an activist and business owner in the Arab American community. His teaching and community experiences have enriched his abilities to communicate in a variety of Arabic regional linguistics and with people from diverse Arab, Arab origins and beliefs. He holds two master's degrees from Wayne State University in bilingual education and Near Eastern studies. So let's please welcome Professor Al Jib. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Riwa. Really, I need, I need that poem maybe for my class. This is very, very important. I could use it. And thanks for Wissam. I think Wissam is involved in a lot of activities he creates. He's behind all the, you see, movement you know, toward or any activities that happen in regarding Arab American culture. I think the topic I would like to talk to you about is, is Arabic language hard to acquire? Who thinks the Arabic language is hard to learn? Raise your hand. I think that's the notion of 99% of my students when they come to the class and I ask that question. Why? Because when you look someone writing Arabic at any place, first of all, they start from right to left with that cursive handwriting. So you think it's, hey, I can't, I can't learn this one. This is, just forget about it. Let's register for Spanish or French or anything else. So forget about the Arabic. So most of my students were driven to learn Arabic for two reasons. One of the reasons to learn Arabic is because their parents ask them to learn Arabic. So to enrich or enhance their identity. Or they, if they want them when they go back to the old country that they know Arabic. The second reason they learn Arabic because they think the dialect they knew at home it's that is the language we teach at school. Really, it's not. We teach at school modern standard Arabic and the, the ABA, Arab born American, really they know the dialect. Arabic suffer from what we call Daglasia. Daglasia is a French word that tell us we have, we have two levels of Arabic, the high level and the lower level of Arabic. The high level of Arabic is the classical Arabic or modern standard Arabic, which used by government, which used by poet, which used by music paper, and everything else. The low level is the one we use on your daily life with your parents and these things. And nobody suffer from that having two languages at the same time, but Arab and sometimes the Greek, when they retain the old language of the Greek. But Arab, they have this problem with the Arabic language. And right now, the debate goes on. Which language we should teach at universities? Should we teach the dialect, or should we teach the mother standard? There is two philosophy behind that. One of the philosophy that born after 9-11, but they did not tell the exact reason why. And that philosophy said, well, language just created for communication. So let's teach the dialect. This philosophy adopted after 9-11. After 9-11, we got caught that nobody knows Arabic in the United States. Nobody knows Hindi. Nobody knows Swahili. Nobody knows Urdu. Nobody knows Persian. That's why after 9-11, you see the chips man, or the candy man, or the taxi cab, they became a translator. And they jump from here to Iraq, and they earn a ton of money. Because, because the culture over here, the culture, the dominant culture over here, does not appreciate acquire in the second language. There is a joke always, they use it to break the ice in our department, and I hear it time after time. 
If you know three languages, you are trilingual. If you know two languages, you are bilingual. If you know one language, you are American. So, so, that's, so that's why lately there is a shift and a change, and there is a problem what we should teach. At Wayne State, we adopted the policy to teach modern standard Arabic. What's modern standard Arabic? Modern standard Arabic is the Arabic, the simple Arabic, that it's understood from Morocco to Iraq. It's understood by everyone. It's the Arabic you hear at TV. It's the Arabic of the newspaper. It's the Arabic, it's not complicated. It's not like the classical Arabic, like the Quran uh, word, okay? We call it modern standard Arabic. This is the one we should teach. Because if you go to Morocco, you use it to understand you. If you go to Lebanon, you use it to understand. Why? Because if you want to teach the dialect, which, which dialect you want to teach? That's the problem. You have so many dialects in the Arab world. Let's consider we have dialect, five dialects in the Arab world. One in Morocco, North African. Then we have Egyptian. Then we have the Levant dialect. Then you have the Gulf dialect. And each, di each area of these, each one of these area has its sub-dialect, has its sub-dialect. Like, like in Iraq, if I tell you, are you mabsoot? They'll get upset because mabsoot means you are beaten. But in <laughs> Lebanon, are you mabsoot? It means, are you happy? So, so notice that difference. So let's put, Right now, most of the experts agree that modern standard should be. But the one who are driven by what the FBI and the CIA want them to do, they adopt teaching the dialect because they need a lot of people to, to tap or to listen to whatever talks between terrorists and their affiliate. Uh, that's what they need. So that's why they encourage to teach the dialect behind this. And the only people who are successful in teaching dialect uh, in the world are in Haifa and Israel. Why? Really, they are successful because they're teaching uh, like uh, a team called Al Mustaribin. Al Mustaribin, this team, they behave and they speak the very local dialect of the Palestinian. Because the Palestinian in Gaza speak a language different from the Palestinian in the, in the West Bank. Even in the West Bank, if you are from Quds, you cannot speak like you are from Tul Karm or wherever, or Ariha. So there is a difference. These Mustaribin, they are able to imitate in language, in everything, the dialect and the tone of these towns. That's why right now some university like Cornell, Cornell and another university, they are teaching the Palestinian dialect. And this is amazing. Why? Because I think some people from Israel are in charge of their department. But at one said we reject to teach the dialect, we decide to teach the matter center. Arabic language is not hard to teach. First of all, all, there is no empirical study of how to teach the Arabic language. That's the problem. What we use, we use all the theory, how to teach, we use how to teach Spanish and we apply it to Arabic. How to teach French and we apply it to Arabic. Because there is no empirical study how to teach Arabic. So it's up to the teacher sometimes how to teach. There is some kind of development lately by certain persons, certain activists, to have the best method of teaching Arabic. It started teaching Arabic start in 1965 by Charles Ferguson. He is one of the Orientalists. And he's, he did a great deal for the Arabic uh, teaching in the United States. It started in Ann Arbor. It took two years to put a program together. But in that program, it was a hard curriculum. It's a hard curriculum to imply and to practice it. How? For the pronoun personnel, there is an Arabic 14, 14 pronoun personnel. This is a turn off for anybody who would like to learn Arabic. How come there is a 14 pronoun personnel? 
we do have that much in English. So we reduce it to like eight. Why? Because in Arabic we have the mode of Muthanna. The mode of Muthanna does not exist in, uh, in English, does not exist in French. So we eliminate the Muthanna because it's not that much in use and we just use eight. Now it's much easier. Second thing, teaching Arabic, they made another mistake by teaching the name of the letter. You do have to teach the name of the letter. All you have to do is to teach the sound of the letter. Teaching the sound of the letter make it easy. So from the first session, you know how to read. From the first session of learning Arabic, you know how to read by teaching the sound of the letter. Instead, teaching ba, that's the name of the letter, teach ba. Ba, at the same time, teach the cases that what's the, what I want to tell you what the case is. The case, there's 28 Arabic letters, but at the same time, there is 14 diacritical mark. Among them 14 diacritical mark, there is a three short vowel. The three short vowel correspond with your mouth movement. You don't have to even to remember it. Easy. Fatha, it means open. Opening, just open your mouth. Let's use the letter ba, ba. So just ba. So this is the first uh, short vowel, ba. Now, there's another short vowel called kasra. Kasra means breaking. So let's break your mouth. B, B. You break your mouth. B. So it's easy to keep it. Then the third one is dhamma. Dhamma, bring your lip together like this. Boo, boo. So if you 